So what are the next lean education experiments? Uh, Constantine asked me to reflect and look ahead. I can't even see five minutes into the future. I'm assuming we'll all be alive in five minutes, but it's not guaranteed, right? Um, so I said, let's, let's just go five years out. What's, what about the next five years? Number one, uh, lean is not just about efficiency anymore. And John has mentioned many times to me over the two days, Mike, we already know that, and uh, I would be completely happy if that's true. I think there are still a lot of organizations out there, both in business and in consulting, who still talk about it, you know, it's purely efficiency. Now, efficiency and cost reduction can be a valid goal, of course. But if we go in and automatically make that the goal, I'm not sure we're doing the right thing. Um, the question is more, what do we want to achieve? Right? And if we think about our big responsibility, how do we capture the imagination of students? If, we don't, if they don't develop a positive emotion about lean, about what we're teaching, then they won't really learn. The, the learning occurs when there's a positive emotion. Uh, and I think one way we can do that is to focus more on human endeavor or challenge, meaning to aspire to something, to reach for something, um, working on things that are meaningful and compelling. And I think if you uh, listen to the Zingerman's presentation or some of the other presentations that were here, compelling is something that affects your work. Compelling is something that affects your team. So if your team says, we want to reduce the lead time so that we can serve the customer much faster, that can be compelling. And I think that may be more compelling than saying, we must cut cost again, and then we get into the stories that uh, Patrick was telling. Really, it's, it's just you know, like it shows in Toyota Kata. We are here. Where do we want to be next? And then we have to experiment our way through the gray zone. So here's a, perhaps a more accurate definition of lean. I just want to leave you with this, and you will get the slides. Um, I just want you to think about this. I'm not proposing that this is the definition of lean. It's something to think about. Lean is not eliminating waste. Lean is a permanent struggle to flow value to one customer. And Toyota likes to say, or used to like to say, we make millions of cars the customer only buys one. And that is a permanent struggle, and it can be very compelling. Uh, I love serving my customer. How can I serve my customer better? OK, number two, if we can't see into the future, what the heck should we teach these young people? Right? We have this great responsibility, but we don't know what they're going to be facing 20, 30 years from now. How do we prepare students for the future when we don't know what the future will bring? We can't predict how to get from A to B. We can't predict how to get from here to here. We can make a plan, but that plan won't be 100% right. Reality is always a little different. Uh, how do we get comfortable with that challenging gray zone in between where we are and where we want to be? And it's been mentioned a few times, and I was happy to hear the word. We can teach scientific meta skills. That is, common, teachable, transferable ways of thinking, scientific thinking, if you will, that can be used over and over in the course of a lifetime. That's what we can teach, and that's probably the best we can do, do to equip uh, young people for the future that they will face. Uh, and it's, John, scientific uh, thinking apl applied in business, your words. Um, let's take a look. Um, what I'd like to show you is a short video. It's two minutes, and we'll probably have to adjust the sound a little bit. Hopefully, we won't blast you out of your seats with the volume. This is a company in Seattle, uh, Washington, northwest United States, called Zulily. They are an online catalog company. They sell uh, women's and children's clothing. And they've been growing a lot. And um, they have to take pictures of each item that they have for sale so they can put it on their website. I'd never heard of this company until two months ago. And they called me up and they said, uh, are you the guy who wrote the Kata book? And I said, yes, I am. They said, we're using Kata. They don't know anything about Toyota. They don't have any lean programs. They don't have a lean staff. But somebody there got hooked on the patterns of the improvement Kata and the coaching Kata, and they started applying it. And they sent this video of what they achieved, and it's remarkable. Watch closely as you see their photography process for the clothing going from their initial to their second to their third iteration through some scientific working. And the reason I want to show you this video is stated up above. This is what can happen when we teach how Toyota works instead of what to just what Toyota is doing. Then we can enable young people for their future, which we can't predict. It's about a two minute video. It takes a second to start up. Let's take a look.
ideally I'd want the stylist just styling, the photographer just taking pictures, you know, for the stylist to be hanging clothes and unhanging clothes and um, moving racks around so they can just add value at what they're specialized in. Kind of gives you the the time and the tools that you need to improve your work instead of sitting on your hands. Um, we're given the time and and uh, the support to make the work better. The paperwork and everything that you do shows that evolution and to see the numbers that back that up was really interesting and um, to be able to say, oh no, this is where it is. I, I do this 75 times a day. I thought it was 100. Well, it kind of goes back to just like, who doesn't like to work with Legos or uh, building blocks or Lincoln blocks or, I mean, there's a reason, there's very foundational that you need to build something from scratch and nothing or taking something that's clearly not working and uh, not just reworking it, but almost reinventing it. Because um, if you look at where, where some of the stuff has started and where it's ended, you wouldn't even be able to compare the, it's hard to actually compare the two, they don't even look similar. Um, so that just tells you how much iteration is happening through the process, so it's, it's impressive. Do <laughs> 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 you have any serious questions for us? Yeah. yeah. Um. So in the video, did you see the flow line? It's incredible. It's a one-piece flow line. We just saw scientists in action, right? Who didn't receive any lean training, who didn't ever see the word Toyota except on a book called Toyota Kata, and, and look what they did. So there is something we can teach young people uh, even though we don't know what the future will bring. Third and last point, uh, challenge for us as educators, we need to strive, and this came up a lot in the conference, obviously, I think we're all thinking about this, we need to strive to teach experientially. Uh, this is a picture of Constantine preparing for the conference here. Um, actually, it's a picture of any educator, I guess in the company as well as in the university, uh, struggling and doing PDCA. How can we teach this experientially within the confines of the semester, within the confines of a work environment? We had several examples. Tomas, uh, your presentation, the la it was one example. How can we do this? And we, we have to keep struggling, I think. Uh, that's the job. It's a significant challenge for university education and university educators, and it will probably require lots of experimentation and adjustment to find ways of teaching experientially within the confines of our educational uh, system and structures. I'm gonna skip this. Um, this is about the need to teach experientially. Look, uh, we're still learning a lot about how the brain works, so take this as an input, and five years from now, maybe we'll think differently again about how the brain works. But this video is the best I've ever found for making the case for teaching experientially. Again, it's two minutes long, if we could just roll this one. Not so long ago, many scientists believed that the brain did not change after childhood, that it was hardwired and fixed by the time we became adults. But recent advances in only the last decade now tell us that this is simply not true. The brain can and does change throughout our lives. It is adaptable, like plastic. Hence, neuroscientists call this neuroplasticity. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task or choose a different emotion, we start carving out a new road. If we keep travelling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action.
The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. So there's a challenge for us. There's a challenge for us. But it's exciting, right? It's an, actually an exciting challenge. Uh, I wanted to bring this picture. This is what happens uh, when uh, this is a company uh, that is using kata, uh, improvement kata, coaching kata, uh, quite a bit. And uh, I got, this was sent to me, again, just a few weeks ago. I said, I'm doing it with my children, okay? Uh, they're working on laundry, I believe, how to take care of the laundry for the, the kids. We have a target condition. We have a current condition. There is a, a list of obstacles. Um, here we have experiments. The, the child predicted it would take uh, 20 minutes to do something. It actually took a different amount of time. And his brother is using the five question card uh, to ask him the coaching cycle questions. They're turning young scientists practicing. Why not? Why not start earlier when we can still learn things more easily? Uh, I have a lot of faith in these guys for future problems. Maybe more faith than I have in us right now. So, uh, you know, lots of opportunity. Uh, so, in sum, how do we educators, how do we meet these challenges? And here's one way to do it. A way to meet these challenges is to apply scientific thinking ourselves. That is, as educators, as lean educators, let me say lean educators, where do we want to be? What's the, what's the direction? Where do we, what's the challenge that we face? And I just named some of them. Number two, where are we today with how we're teaching and what we're teaching? Number three, where do we want to be next? and then you already know what's coming. Number four, let's start experimenting in that direction. That was the picture of Constantine going through the mud with the barbed wire up above. And what I'd like to propose is that do this and share the lessons you learn uh, in Sweden next year, about this time. All right, we have a few more comments and uh, maybe we'll see you next year. <laughs>